Hello, everybody. It's midday on Friday. I love doing the show on Friday, actually, Stephen. I feel Do you prefer it? Uh, in a way, yes. I mean, mm. for a start, I feel, especially as we get up towards Christmas, it just kind of feels quite Christmassy doing it on a Friday. I don't know. Maybe um, that should be part of our plan for next year. Maybe WoW moves to Friday at 12 Maybe. In, the new, in the new year. Maybe our permanent new sort of home is, is midday on a Friday. Yeah, I think I, I, I do think it's a, a good day of the week. I've, I've actually got some um, Christmas decorations around here as well at the moment. Have so. you? Yeah. Look. Oh, very nice. That's very festive, isn't it? It is. It's it, it, It's basically like a, a gone-off doily. Yeah. Um, that's... <laughs> it looks like it's been silver spray-painted. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, you, if, you, if you, like, got food and stuff all over your doily and it went hard. and then That's it. That's that's kind of it, and then it's sprayed. Yeah, I t- tell you what, the w- worst bit about it is, is that I came home to find that had been hung up in the window next to me here. Right. And um, but someone had, in putting it up, had sort of like lifted it over my chair, and my my entire chair, as it is now actually, because I've just done it again, is covered in glitter. In glitter, yeah. Yeah. So I walked <laughs> around for the rest of the afternoon with a sparkly bottom. I wasn't sure whether the the sun coming in through that window, through that decorative pattern, sort of left you with a bit of a mottled look over your face when you were doing calls or something like. Oh, that, that would be quite good, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of like this, yeah. This kind of <laughs> a permanent, yeah, <laughs> a permanent thing. If yeah. the sun came out, I'd, I'd end up going out, and people would go, "What's what's going on with your face?" Oh, yeah. I don't know. You, you seem to have like kind of a snow mark on your face. Yeah. No, that could happen. <laughs> Anyway, back for another week. And, uh, of course, as usual, we've got um, our favourite game. Um, you know, we keep saying that I should put it at the end, but it's, it's so much easier to get yeah. the guests in first. Um, so, you know, that's that's what we've got to do. Um, there, there we go. Right. Let's welcome the one and only Colette to, uh, to the, the table. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi, Colette. Colette you're, you're immediately showing us up because you've got uh, an exercise bike or, or something <laughs> similar in the background. There. No, I never use it, Graham. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Never use <laughs> Everyone always says, everyone that's got one of those says, I never use it. Right. And then I, and I, and then I just pretend that I've got one um, and that I use it. And uh, and that's a lie as well. So well, wait, see, when, you say, when you say you it, never though. use it, I don't Come use on. it ever. I don't. Right. I, I, no, I don't use it. I don't think anyone ever uses it. No. Really? No. I used um, to. Yeah. No, not anymore. No. What? What is it actually? What is it? Is it a bike? Is it a? Is it a? It's a, a treadmill. Sport? A treadmill. Oh, it goes down. It's a treadmill. Yeah, it comes down. It's a treadmill. Oh, oh yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, and I was looking, thinking, is someone going to be sort of running almost up to the ceiling? But it's got to do that, hasn't it? So it's got to yeah, do no. that. It's a treadmill that never gets used. Have you uh, you never tried it as uh, uh, up against the desk? You, you tried the old de- treadmill desk solution? No, because my desk no, because my desk is quite short. It's quite small. Right. So right. I don't think it would work at all. I don't okay. fancy doing, I don't fancy using it at all, Graham. Quite frankly, I'm no. Just not, no. No. eBay. Okay. Get it on eBay. Get it sold. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the way. Stephen, have you? Talking about treadmill desks, we're, um, we'll, we'll come back to Colette in a minute. Um, have you ever tried one? No. You no. No, I've seen them. It's a bit like sort of some you have treadmill desks, and then there's sort of sort of bike chairs, aren't there as well? So you can pedal as you're working. So yeah, yeah. Look a bit. I'm not too sure. What's the? <sighs> well, next time you go see uh, Mr. Guy Osmond. Okay. Our friend Guy Osmond. Go ask him whether you can have a go on these treadmill desks. Oh, has he got one, has he? He's got one, yeah, he's got one. Right. Got a treadmill desk. Personally, I find it quite difficult to focus Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm rubbish balance-wise anyway. Right? Mm. I, I mean, you put me on a, a on a bike and I'll just fall off. I've right? just got this image of sort of concentrating too much on the desk and not my feet and then sort of face-planting into the, into the treadmill as I'm sort of going along. That would be my primary concern is injury. Yeah, it was, it'd be my primary concern as well. Um, yeah. yeah, no, so it, it just just doesn't work for me. So, um, Colette, thanks for joining yeah. us. What, what what is it you do, Colette? So I am a virtual assistant. 
Yeah. Um, you look quite real, actually. I said, yeah, funny that. Um, I started my business um, six months ago. Um, I've got a background as being a legal PA in the city and right. um, offshore. Um, and, I, and I did that for about 20 years. Um, and then for one reason or another, lots of different reasons, I decided to do something else. Um, so I started Q Virtual about six months ago and it's actually going really well, really well. Um, I really enjoy it actually. I really enjoy actually being my own boss. Um, it's very different working than working with you know lawyers and city and things but um, it's yeah. really good I really enjoy it and is it a lot of legal VA work that you do I don't do it. so basically my my thing is I I could have niched over to to just do law um, but I don't do that I have I, I actually have a variety of clients from all different sectors which is what I want because I kind of mm. I like the fact that I've got a variety of things to do um so every day is slightly different you know you're doing organizing I organized the women's international podcast awards a couple of months ago and really? did loads of different things loads of different sectors um and it's going really well I'm really enjoying it yeah well, that's that's really good. We Stephen and I should be up for um best ergonomic podcast. Yeah. <laughs> because quite frankly, I've not seen any others. I was gonna say, are there any others? I, yeah. well, not that you know <laughs> not number not number same, one in a field of one. Yeah, not, number one in our own field. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's certainly. interesting what Colette says there because we did an event, Graham. Oh, 12 months ago, maybe 14 months ago, didn't we? Where we we sort of did a uh, Obviously, on the back of home working, etc., we did a, a bit of a, a sort of a webinar session, and we and we opened it up to the VA community, didn't we? Um, mm -hmm. And we had quite a lot of people join in just because it was a lot of people were doing it. Colette, on the back of the the whole lockdown piece, had actually yeah. sort of taken it on board and started their own businesses. I remember rightly, Joe Manville, wasn't it? I think who we particularly oh, right, yeah. spoke to. Um, you know, Joe. Yeah, she was. I think she's down exit away, and um, I, I know she was one of the main sort of protagonists and pulled quite a few of her people and, and the VA community together. It was really, really interesting. Um, yeah. And yeah, to I say, think, it, it's sprung up, up, hasn't it? A lot of people now that are actually jumping on on the VA thing. And I think mm. so many business owners are now transferring from employees to VAs because it's, it's, it's cost effective. It, you know, you don't pay for the tax you don't pay for the holiday pay you don't pay for the sick pay you literally just pay for the work that you're getting getting done mm. so you know it's a no-brainer for most business owners i think and i think that's why people are transitioning over to vas now it's very mm. very popular in the states and i think everyone has a va in the states it's it's a kind of the thing and i think we're we're now following that makes sense yeah but, you know um, and it goes back to what we've been talking about all the way along. If people are getting rid of real estate as well mm. um, and not having offices, then you outsource your people as well. Exactly. And I think actually a lot of um, a lot of my clients are actually remote companies that have actually been in offices and have now decided to take the leap and actually become completely remote. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot more remote workers out there as far as you're concerned. I think so. I mean, I mean, obviously, I've only been doing this for six months, so I don't really know what it was, you know, like um, before the pandemic. But certainly the people that approach me are people that um, have companies that are remote and fully remote and did have companies in the city, say, and they've all disbanded and just yeah. decided that they're all going to be remote workers. And it's got oh, such go. opportunities for flexibility as well, hasn't it? Because, of course, you, you know, you can do some of the work around maybe people who have children or maybe who people who are doing caring, et cetera, have yeah. the ability to sort of they're not thinking about going to the office where that may not work. But actually, they could do a little bit at 630 in the morning and then stop. Maybe and I'm picking people who maybe have children do the school run or maybe if they're caring for someone or whatever they're doing and then pick it up in the evening. And exactly. I guess they can sort of build it around your sort of Absolutely. personal life. And I think, I mean, for me personally, I'm still working sometimes at 10 o'clock at night, mm. um, but that's my choice. And that's, and that's basically working around my life. So, yeah. and, it, and it works perfectly for me. It's really, really good. I couldn't have done that in the city. There's, you know, there are obviously you're, you're supposed to be in, a, in an office at a certain time. You leave at a certain time. Um, and you, you, you know, it's very difficult with children to do that. Whereas now I can work at the weekends. I can work whenever I want. And it's really good. It is really yeah. good. 
Absolutely. Do you think will you will you take more people on for your business, Colette? Or are you just very much a, a, a one person band? Or? I, I think my I think my business model is that is you know as soon as I'm completely full, um, then I will start having um, associates working with me. That's that's the idea. That is the idea of it. So I okay. hope next year that that's going to happen for me. I mean, I wanted the first year to kind of concentrate on the business as you know a brand and everything else, and then after that start concentrating on growing it a bit. It's really good. I'm just putting the link to this show um, for YouTube for anyone that um, can't get onto it at the moment in LinkedIn because LinkedIn and StreamYard apparently have a little bit of a problem at the moment. So, oh. um, what are they, not, are they not friends anymore? Or? They're not friends anymore. They're, ah. they're, yeah, I can see that some people are watching this live on YouTube. There we go. Ah, oh, look, there we go. I was going to say we usually get. I sort of keep the comments box open, and we usually get a lot of sort of comments and feed coming in from that. That sort of forms part of the conversation, and it's it's pretty. Except for Odessa, it's empty. Yeah, it's like where is everyone today? We're going to make sure we will push it back out. Look, that people are now commenting on YouTube. So ah, we're, she's we're... no, she's come up with the YouTube sig. Um, uh motif emblem as opposed to the linkedin one okay yeah so what we're doing is we're making sure that people can, can follow this on right. linkedin uh, odessa says hello colette hello odessa there you are she's still she's got changed, a long hair she's though. changed the pic i was gonna say she's she needs to update a youtube picture i was gonna say her uh, hair's growing yeah it's very quick growing it's amazing <laughs> that's that's happened in the last week now colette we just have to explain the rules of this game okay so every yeah. week we play a little game called Guess the Ergo. All right. Um, which is where <laughs> Stephen gets to, to don uh, mm. a said scarf from his favourite football club. Not my favourite right. football Utton, Utton, Utton Oldfield. And yeah. um, there they are, Sutton Coldfield Town. He puts that on and then he can ask you questions right. about the object that I hold up. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, we like to we like to try and bring on guests which who we hope have absolutely no idea about ergonomic devices. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I've got okay. I've got a gel wrist rest, but that's about you know as ergonomic as I get. We could have we could have used that said item, but actually we're not going to. I've got another item here. Um, I'm going to hold that up. He's got to then ask you questions. You can say yes or no to those questions. If we need to, we'll give him a little bit of a steer. All right. All right. Okay, Only yeah. because we don't want this to go on all day. It gets, <laughs> a, little, it gets a little bit dull. No, neither do I, right. funnily enough. Right. <laughs> now, um, because uh, Stephen's a massive fan of I'm a Celebrity as well, oh, Ant right. and Deck have, have let themselves into Stephen's house. And every time he gets it wrong, there's a bucket of something's going to come down on his head as well. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> yeah, of course you do. Uh, actually, we could at some stage we might do that if we do it live somewhere. Um, sort of merge this with I'm a celebrity and guess the ergo. Yeah, yeah, that that could that could make it fun. And you know, if you had like live cockroaches or something coming down on your head, that would that would be fun. So here's here's the item for everyone to see. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. Okay, that's mm -hmm. lovely. Right, you can have your first guess, Stephen. Okay, can I? Would you? wear this item no you would not wear this item okay uh would you sit on this item you would not sit on this item okay. although graham's trying to yeah of course he is uh, <laughs> would you use this item with your hands you would okay uh is it made of metal or plastic it is made of plastic okay uh would it sit on your desk it would sit on your desk okay uh is it a type of keyboard it isn't no okay uh would you use it with paper no okay uh <laughs> <sighs> Would you would you attach it to your screen or monitor? Uh, no, you would not. Oh, no, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Okay. No. Uh, would you use it with your mobile phone? No. Okay. 
is it a Jill? Is it? Is it a, I'm doing a gel all the wrist rest today? That's what she's left laughing. Oh, okay. Is it a gel wrist rest? <laughs> No, it's not a gel wrist rest. That'd be a massive coincidence if it was. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, what co Can you tell me what colour it is? It is black. Oh, gosh. It's actually graphite. It's actually really cool, actually. <sighs> okay. Graeme, should I be getting this one by now, do you think? Yes. <laughs> well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you you could phone a friend about this. You could phone a friend about this. Yeah, yeah. It's not an old school telephone, is it? No, but I, if I was going to phone a friend, I'd probably pick Patrick to phone about this one. Ah, uh, okay. Is it a contour mouse? <gasps> yes, yeah. it is. Is it a you roller mouse? It? Roller mouse? No. Uni mouse? <laughs> yeah. Is it uni mouse? Yeah, yeah. I bet you answered that because I never clue. There you go. Yay! You go. <laughs> so, other other, other uh, vertical mice are um, available. Mm. Um, what's the, the interestingly? Do you understand the difference between a vertical mouse and a normal mouse, Colette? Um. Is it your hand position? So it's your hand position, right? Yeah. So, so we're going to show you another model here now, which is um, so this one's made by Contour. Uh, the one that Stephen's holding up is made by a company called Backer. Um, there we Hang are. on. There you Just go. So, you know. so that's okay. how you'd work it like that. So the whole idea is that with a normal mouse, da da, um, with a normal mouse, your hand sits in this position. Yep. Yeah. So all the movement from the mouse comes from your wrist, yeah. And you're constantly mm -hmm. moving moving your wrist backwards and forwards. And a lot of people end up with wrist problems, okay? Because actually they hold their arm away from their body, um, quite often with a twisted posture. And then actually all the pressure is down through the through the, the twist in the body and into the wrist. And the wrist does all of the work. Now, by putting your hand in more of a handshake position with a vertical mouse, the idea is that you actually use the larger group of muscles, etc., in your arm to do the work okay. rather than just your wrist. So you're yeah. taking the pressure off the wrist all the time. Do you ever get do you ever get pains in the wrist? Um, I've kind of got a little ergonomic one. Right. Like, yeah. Tiny little one there. Kind of I'm, a little I'm, bit. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Still a bit. Still a bit. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like those at yeah. all. Um, yeah, I'd, yeah, I probably should get one of those. Considering yeah. how much I use a keyboard, I probably Steve, should. Well, Stephen, why don't you send if you send me your address? If you yeah. uh, if you connect with me on LinkedIn and send me your address, we will get you one of said PRF mouses by Becca Elkows, and we'll get one of those sent out in the post. So um, yeah, if you can connect with me on LinkedIn and then send me a, a, a message with your address, we'll get one of those out to you next week. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then you can do a little post and you can tell people what it's all about. Yeah, I'll do a little review on it. Yeah, Perfect. absolutely yeah. that. I'll do that. That's fine. That'd be, Thank that'd you. be fabulous. So that's what that's that's what that's all about. People don't realise that you don't actually have to just come uh, work with the mouse that comes with the machine. Mm. Mm. That's the that's the important point. There are different types of mouse I think out there. I actually did buy that separately. That mouse. That's good. Good. Um, but people don't necessarily yeah. know what's right for them. You see. No. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. And depending upon whether you have some kind of condition or whether you you know you're working in a particular way and the type of work that you're doing as well, it may be that you need different type of mice. Now. Mm. To be fair, I didn't actually know that that even existed. And that, and that is what we've been banging on, Graham, for the last sort of 18, 20 months, is that actually the, 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 the products and solutions out there, Colette, there is so much out there, but generally, it's an, certainly in the UK market, it's not very well known about. There's lots of things that you can buy to assist you, um, you know, whether it's mice, whether it's keyboards, whether it's stands, whether it's monitor arms. There is so much out there and a lot of people don't know it exists. We, do you remember, Graham, we did a piece with a one of the guests was the guy who was the voiceover guy. Um, 
Do you remember about six weeks yeah. ago? And we That's sent right. him out. We sent him out a document holder because what he was doing was he was sort of um, recording into the microphone, but he had paper all over his desk. And we've got yeah. a we've got a document holder that sits in between the keyboard and the screen, so it was straight in front of him. So rather than doing this and twisting and turning and causing all sort of issues to his to his body, yeah, we've got something that means the paper sits in front of you. So again, it's just awareness. This is one of the biggest things we come across as a business. I, mean, I know, I know that. When we were working in, the, when I was working in the big law firms, we would often have regular um, people people coming around all the time checking our desks for assessments to make sure mm. that they were ergonomically correct how yeah. we were sitting. Hence, why I have a document holder that is in line of my vision, so mm. I know and I know that's really important, so that I wasn't looking down or whatever. You know, it was quite important for me to keep looking that way. Um, but, you know, so we were made aware of it, definitely. Mm. Um, but no one really did lots about it. You know, yeah. I thought, you know it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? I think, you know, you're, you don't, unless, unless somebody gives you something and says, look, this is a new product, you don't really see them. No. You just think, well, that's the mouse and I'll get a new mouse. And mm. you know, that you oh. don't, you're not aware of these new ones. Well, I think it's, it's twofold there. It, the education has to be very specific yeah you can't just educate people and say oh look um there may be some things that are going wrong here yeah here's a catalog you just you get on and order whatever it is you need because unless you're unless you are actually trained in what's coming out and you are trained in various areas like ergonomics or or, or you know biomechanics or whatever you won't know what things out of a page will actually do the job for that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right? So most people then look at it, you know, they get a catalog and they go, oh, oh, I heard the word copy holder, so I'll get a copy holder. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But if you, you know, depending upon how you're working, if you're, if the copy is, you know, if you're constantly got a copy holder to the sign and all day long you're doing that mm. to read yeah. the copy holder, that, that could be even worse. Yeah. I mean, I think I think for me, because I don't need to look when I type, yeah. I don't need to look at a screen or I don't need to look at a keyboard. So you can I just look at the copy holder. Copy, and I don't need to twist at all because I'm just looking at copy and I know that, you know, what I'm typing is going to be correct anyway. Um, but I think I agree. I think if you're constantly doing that or doing that, it's, you know, it's not good for you at all. Absolutely. Is it? No. But actually, the interesting thing is, though, is, as you're saying, Colette, with more and more people sort of establishing themselves away from the office, you think of all those people who maybe yourselves, the VA community, who have previously worked in an office where there was some sort of management of the process around your yeah. desk. It's yeah. now falling on yourselves as individuals. Um, so it's it, it, the education piece is really yeah. important. Exactly. And I, I remember when I was at, when I was at my last law firm, I actually they bought me a, um, an ergonomic chair. And it costs about three thousand pounds, and that's fantastic. Well, I know I was very lucky, um, but um, three grand. Yeah, it was. It was, was it, it gold? Was in dancing. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, but I was, was having gold. neck pains. I was having neck pains, so they were trying to look after me. Um, right. But I can't afford that for my office, though. No. You know, and it's well, um, for a start. Oh, uh, there's very few chairs that cost three grand. Oh, right? it was. It was like singing, dancing, lovely chair. Yeah, yeah but there still are. Yeah. Not very many chairs that are three grand. Oh, um, really? No, yeah. Yeah, having, having been there, seen it done, it got the T-shirt. And and, and <laughs> anyone that's watching this later on that that works for any of the seating manufacturers will know there are not many chairs. It wasn't in this country, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Country. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was from one of those countries. Um, <laughs> you, look, there's <laughs> a thing to, thing to say about that. Um you do need to spend a reasonable amount of money to get a, a, a reasonable chair. Mm. You certainly don't need to spend three grand. Yeah. Um, but also, there are options in terms of how you can buy things these days. Interestingly, I was having this conversation with a, 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 a you know a finance chap the other day. You know, you can you can asset finance buy or, or uh, lease buy pretty much anything now. Mm. So in the same way, I mean, you know, I've I, I've got a a decent Mac computer here in front of me. I mean, not everybody can afford to buy a Mac computer straight off, mm. right? But it's 
it, you know, if it's the work tool that you need in order to do it, you can split that into payments. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, and the same with a chair. You don't necessarily, if it's a thousand pounds, you don't necessarily have to spend out a thousand pounds against your cash flow. There are ways to buy into it. Um, but I, but, but, the, I suppose, but I suppose if you're sitting at a desk for 10 hours a day, then I suppose you should invest in something like that. Yeah, well, the one that we always talk about is the seat in a car, right? Mm. If uh, What car do you drive, Colette? I've got a Honda. You've got a Honda. Honda Civic? Yeah, well, it's like kind of an old one that doesn't exist. Oh, right, okay. okay. <laughs> it's like an FRV. It's like, um, yeah, it's quite old. Okay. okay. Put it this way. If there, there will be people out there that will say, I can't afford a, a decent chair for the office. Yeah. And, yeah, on their drive... If, and this is the funny, funny thing at the moment. They're on their drive, they may have something like a, you know, uh, a, a BMW or, or, or you know, a Mercedes, something like that. Not even, not even top of the range, just like mid class, right? Yeah. How much do you reckon the chair would be in that? The driver's chair would be in that car. Probably more than this. About chair. three and a half thousand pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how long do people sit in it every day? Not, not as long as they used to. Office, yeah. no. but these days, very little. A lot yeah. of people, you know, maybe 20 minutes tops yeah. in that seat. Mm. How long do you sit in the chair that you work for all day long? Exactly, yeah. Exactly. Hours. So it's all about priorities at the end of the day. Absolutely. Mm. But that's, a, that's exactly it. It's all about where your priorities lie. I think, Graham, the, the, the thing would be, we, we touched on this last week, didn't we, where those new guidelines had come out from the HSE about homeworking and I, I saying, I'll, I'll try and get the link in the comments at some point. Um, but again, just there's a very simple video where you can just watch and you can almost do a, a sort of a self-assessment, Graham, I guess you'd call it, wouldn't you really, where it just shows you in a, a nice sort of um, pictorial video how you should be set up. So you can almost identify potentially anything a you're doing right which is good or b anything you're doing wrong and sometimes it can just need you know it isn't always if you've got a good chair it may be the fact that it needs to be adjusted and i think that's one of the things you've probably come across graham a lot is the fact someone has the right chair but doesn't know how to adjust it they might just need to tweak you know they might need just to buy one or two small accessories or adjust what they've already got but yeah. it's the guidance really it's the lack of knowledge that people haven't got and that's no sort of and, reflection yeah, exactly. on them, but... they don't have that in in a, in a home office do they they really no. don't yeah the other thing is um going back to your three thousand pound chair three it, was, it was so expensive i remember seeing the invoice for it yeah 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 well um so, had, you know yeah, someone got ripped off um, um uh going back to your three thousand pound chair <laughs> um is that <laughs> If you needed a three thousand pound chair, the logic would say you still need a three thousand pound chair. But the answer to that—no, no, 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 no. no. There, there was a reason. I need, I need to, I have to hold my hands up to this now. Then, so I yeah. was, I was getting really bad pains in my neck, mm -hmm. and they tried everything to stop these pains. And actually, it, it wasn't their fault, and it was I was not well. And so they were trying very hard to try and help me, but no mm, one yeah. knew that I was unwell. I had, I actually had a spinal fluid leak, uh, um, and I actually had bleeds on my brain as well. But they didn't; nobody knew that. But I was getting pains. But they were trying so hard. And to be fair, to give them credit, they were they were amazing because they were trying really. They were doing trying to do everything they could mm. to get rid of these pains. But you know, I didn't know, and they didn't know. So to be fair to them, you know, but I understand what you're saying. Um, well, yeah, it, 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 what, what it shows is that it's really, really important that when people have assessments that all of the different elements come together. One of the one of the things if someone's got ongoing issues yeah, like that, one of the things that I would always ask for as an assessor is I would I would ask for medical advice to be. Mm. Which, which, to be fair to them, they did that as well. Yeah, they, they did. did. Right. Yeah. yeah. They did that as well. It's yeah. really, really, really important. What I would say is, what I was going to come back to on that as well, though, is when you then work from home as well, your working pattern may be very different from when you work in the office. Oh, 100%. So, so you know, some of it will go away from necessarily needing exactly the same things as you did in an office space. Yeah. Because you can put in different types of adjustment such as 
not necessarily working in the same place all the time and moving around a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, you know, but this is why it's really, really important that people get us now start to get assessed in their working space, wherever that may be. Yeah. Um, because it actually, you can't necessarily just go, well, I had an assessment in the office. I'm now going to. Who would do those? Who would do those assessments? Oh, wow. Well, now it's a good job to ask that question. <laughs> Who would do these assessments? So what people need to be looking out for are independent workplace assessors. And LinkedIn is full of them. In fact, what I might do really? today, I, I didn't know that. I didn't even know they existed. Yeah. As I part of this is uh, um, I might put a whole tag, a whole load of people in. Yeah. To, to this okay. video yeah. afterwards who carry out independent workplace assessments. Yeah. There's a lot of lot of people, a lot of friends Wait, of the show, a lot of people out there who'll be able to help you in really easily. Yeah. yeah. Me and Steve, me and Stephen will will tag as many people as we can possibly think of afterwards in that. And then if anybody sees this and they want independent help and advice, they can get it. That's what that's what you need. That's what you yeah, need. Yeah, I didn't know they even existed. So yeah, I've that's what we're here for. That is exactly what we're here for. If we if we serve yeah. no other purpose on the earth other than holding up tacky christmas decorations uh, and playing the ergo well, find the ergo game it's that it's to educate people so that they yeah. know what's what yeah. yeah it's been brilliant meeting you and Thanks you too guys and I'm, you. I'm, I'm next time i see you i expect the, the the bike to be gone or the treadmill to be gone yeah right. <laughs> i wouldn't i can't promise that it's probably it's probably been with me for about 15 years oh really <laughs> We could put up a lovely, great Christmas tree there, though, couldn't we? Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got a Christmas tree here, actually, right there on my desk. It's nice. Know, but we could have a second, second one there. Could have a <laughs> lovely, lovely, great that one. Um, I will tell you what, well, I'll sell it for you now. How much do you want for it? I don't want anything for it. I'm going to go on it one day. Well, you are going to go on it one day. You want to keep I've been it? I've saying that for fifteen years. Maybe I will do it one day. Oh, right. Okay. I, I, I want to see, but then next time we meet you, when you come back, I want to see if you've managed to make it into a treadmill desk. Think about it. All you need to do is get something that's at the right height. Mm. You could have a stand to, stand to treadmill there. Think about it. Yeah, you've got the front bit there. So the front bit, that bit there, yeah. is going to be where the desk is, surely. So you could can't you, really... Can you work on the front bit with a laptop? No, because that I would fall off. This is my concern about these things. There's going to be face face planting left, right, and centre. Yeah, I would fall off. You I think about it. You could do it. You could do it when you have phone conversations. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You take a break That's away true, from your yeah. desk, put your phone up there, and you could just go like, "Yeah, okay, I'll just walk. I'll walk with you." I'm absolving myself of all responsibility if Colette gets injured from this suggestion. This is yeah, this is on him. It's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. More mm. more telephone conversations on on your. Graham, I know what I'm going to do it, and I'm going to put a post on LinkedIn and show you that I'm di I'm doing it next time. Do you know I have what? A I'm going That's, to do it. Do you know what? That's what I like so far. Out of this, we've educated, <laughs> and we've got two posts coming. There you go. Yeah, make sure you give Stephen your address. Yeah, for, connect with me mouse. on LinkedIn and we'll get that mouse I think, over I think to you. I think I'm with you guys actually. So I think okay. I'm Great. There we go. Okay. Brilliant. I'll get that Thank sorted. you so much for your time today. You're very welcome. Oh, I love that from Odessa. Personal injury <laughs> lawyers also exist on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, if it works, my name's Graham. If not, my name's Stephen. Okay. Yeah. Um, bye, for, bye for now, Colette. Thank you. Later. Bye. 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 Brilliant. brilliant absolutely brilliant well do you know what that was that couldn't have been a better conversation but again did you you know we've 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 banged this drum for a number of months it'll be years we can say soon graham but it just yeah. shows that you know people um and it's not their it's not their responsibility to know this but there is a real lack um generally of awareness around what products are there what they can do what the benefits so it just shows you how much there is still to do isn't there a huge amount still and if more and more people are, are taking up this va option as an example or working from home how many again are working in discomfort and as you say you know colette wasn't aware of the number of assessors that were out there and as you say we'll tag a few people in there could be people who are you know desperate for some support but aren't 
where where to turn and i think if we get in with the va community i think uh, you know word of mouth potentially could spread with them and and they can all be aware of what services are out there so it's it's beneficial for everyone it's it's certainly that's been the biggest change mm. over this whole um, yeah. pandemic period has been the amount of people that have, have set up on their own um yeah. and and the amount of services that are now being offered by by professionals two companies uh one man bands or, or, or little collectives um from home and th this is this is where it you know this is where the change needs to happen so mm. um it's fundamental now uh very quickly before we move on to whatever subject you would like to discuss this week did you did you see did you see that um a certain mr osman actually brought up the 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 whole issue of polls during the week on linkedin <laughs> Yes. Well, that was quite funny. Uh, what, 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 what's just just out of interest? What's your view on polls? Um, I, I like them. Point, I know what point. I know what point he he's making. Yeah, I, I think the it. problem is too many people have jumped on the bandwagon. I think. I think the problem is it, it depending on the mix of people you have in your connections, you can end up having 10, 12 polls a day. Generally. I, I, and I'm not just saying this, I look for yours. Um, leading question. <laughs> I don't look at, when I'm answering, I don't look at the comments because she starts to she starts to throw me. I think some of them are just silly. I think that's what annoying people, some of them are just stupid where there literally is a, a two choices. And to me, that's not particularly a poll. For a poll, you're trying to get in as many different options and answers as possible. And I think, and I'm using you as an example here, and I'm not blowing smoke up your backside and all that sort of thing, but you put three or four options there. Some of these polls are just silly yes or no questions, and I, and I question what value they're actually bringing. I don't think it's drawing things out. Yeah, I think I, it's the subject matter as well. Yeah. I, I think um, Guy was mentioning, you know, sort of just Christmas based food related items or whatever yeah. um what what i said to him what i said as a response in that though was that um i think it's one of the things i find quite interesting about the whole subject is that i understand that there are certain subjects which are not necessarily what we would deem as business subjects and on a business based platform you know why have we got these kind of mm. uh conversations going on about you know choose your favorite biscuit or whatever but what i what i said was that let's think about this in terms of what's happened in the office as well though because actually i think we've lost to a certain extent i think we've lost those water cooler moments because actually people haven't been in the office so yeah if you think about if you think about uh linkedin as as a as a meeting place for business people yes people do want to talk about business related things and you know have more serious conversations about uh subject matters which are related to their business but also for, for some people especially like our friend colette who's sitting there at home all day you long, probably you won't see anyone won't see a colleague see physical anyone. colleague all week no, there are none of those water cooler moments anymore. So actually, so to some extent, what you've got is, I think you've actually, what we're seeing is you've actually got people wanting those little moments of mm. respite as well. It's and, a difficult one. It's, it is a tricky one because I do see that people use this joke about, oh, it's not Facebook and all that sort of stuff. I, I agree with you. I think the problem is, like with all things, some people have taken it to the extreme. And I know, I know, haven't spoken to a few people in different industries. A couple of them are people outside of work. Couple of them, couple of them in our field of, of of work, who have got a little bit turned off by LinkedIn because they've seen too much of what they consider non-business related. And I think that's where it's a difficult one, isn't it, really? You're right. You want your personality to come across. Those water cooler moments about biscuits and things, you know, they're, they're all, I, I can, I get that. I just see a lot of posts on there now that I struggle to see how they fit into either. And therefore, mm. it is becoming, that. I know it's a cliche, but it is becoming a little bit Facebook. And I think that turns people off is where they're looking to engage with people and they see posts and I don't, I 
myself go, yeah, I'm, to me, you, you're stepping outside of the, the remit, as it were, of what I think and other people will think LinkedIn is for. Well, I think, I think for me, I think where it falls down is if, and because I don't think it takes that much more effort to actually take something which isn't necessarily that um, highbrow, mm. but twist it and at least put some kind of messaging in there. Yeah. You know, and I think, I think that if, if people at least went that other little bit of effort mm. and actually go, right, so how can I relate this back to my business somehow? Yeah. Then actually it would be a better place. I think, I think for me, the, the, the posts and the polls that really get to me is where it's literally like, you know, I like chocolate biscuits. Don't you like chocolate biscuits? uh here's here's the poll um do you like chocolate biscuits yes no well yeah it's and... like okay and you haven't told me anything about your business mm. or you haven't be, tried to be at all clever and go you know well um the thing about biscuits is that they make a mess and actually in my line of field i actually clean up a mess by doing this yeah. you know at least mm. try a little bit Mm. you know to bring it back lazy well. people are lazy i think aren't they that's the problem yeah so there we go that that that's my view on it i think i think uh uh he had a very valid point i think we just need to step it up a little bit you know if you're going if you're going to do the, the posts or polls or whatever that are actually just a little bit less cerebral mm. at least make a little bit of effort to mm. try and associate it with something to do with your business so that there's yeah. some pull all right just a little bit yeah that would be great and if you can't do it come and see me i'll do it for you yeah. um is that that's in case odessa's out of the office they come to you i guess isn't it well yeah yeah she's yeah, the, yeah. she's the brains of the outfit really absolutely I just, I just... don't tell us something we don't know graham no absolutely there we go Oh, does LinkedIn remove personality on sign up? Yeah, just offer cookies. There we go. There we go. So, what what subjects have you seen this week that we ought to talk about? Well, the one that I think is quite an interesting one, which is you know we've we've talked about before, and people are probably sick of hearing about it. But the one I'm finding is is masks, right? Mm. Masks, masks, and the attitude of supermarkets to masks, I think, is interesting. So. You've got this thing where it's now the law about wearing masks in supermarkets. Bear in mind, who's who? Which which type of organisations have really profited profited from the crisis? Supermarkets have just done amazingly well, haven't they? They've made an absolute fortune. Now, some of them, to me, are taking the responsible attitude where they're trying to encourage the use of masks. And I went to the local Sainsbury's yesterday and there, there was a, a lad probably around 20 ish who was standing on the door. If you hadn't got a mask, he was handing one out. Other but, supermarkets are available, by the way. Folks. Absolutely, of course. Um, but it surprises me how many other supermarkets are, going, are prepared to make no effort, who've, who've basically said, we're not going to enforce it. And I just think, well, hang on. I think, A, it's the law. You should be trying to enforce it. And B... I'm not being funny, but you've made an absolute packet from from this in terms of extra turnover uh, and extra customers and revenue. Those are the type of businesses who could enforce, or sorry, who could afford to enforce the rules by putting a couple of you know a couple of of guys on the on the area uh, on the on the reception area, the arrival area, and making sure people wear masks. I'm just a little bit surprised that the attitude is we don't really seem to want to do anything, but. I don't know. As I say, you, you, you know, it, it it forms a lot of opinions as this subject. But to me, I, I I don't get it. I get the local independent shop. I don't get the big corporates who are making hundreds of millions from all of this. And I basically go and now nah, we're not doing anything. Just come in. We're not going to challenge anyone. I, I'm I'm slightly surprised by that attitude. Well, I, I I tell you, I think it's quite um, it's quite funny, and I I, I enjoyed very much doing a. a poll on this the other day ah sorry about that guy back to you go. um but to just to twist it slightly mm. one of the one of the things i really have enjoyed doing lately is is playing with people's uh ability to actually concentrate and and focus when when they're looking through their 
their LinkedIn. And so I did a poll on <laughs> the whole, if you read the actual post, it was actually about wearing masks at work. And by that, I meant personality masks. Yes, right. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. You saw that, yeah. I did see it. So it's about, I, 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 about I wearing these masks at work, and the fact that actually we put on different a different personality for different people, and 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 or, or are we being genuine? Because again, this is something that's talked about quite a lot by certain people on on LinkedIn at the moment. Are you being authentic? Are you being genuine? Mm. Um, and the amount of people that stormed in on it and went, "I'm never wearing one." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've not actually read they, they've not actually got to the the re, the crux at the bottom and i and and you know and i i had to i spent ages going through and commenting going and what about personality masks and they're like oh sorry yeah i didn't yeah, read yeah. it <laughs> oh, yeah. so i quite enjoy that i got, quite enjoy the fact that um clearly that's another thing folks you really do need to read stuff properly yeah let, mm. let's let's i think we're getting very not only are we getting lazy in the way we write things we are actually getting very lazy in the way we read and absorb and assimilate information as well sorry graham uh, what did you say I, I got distracted there could you just uh, yeah uh, um jeez <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, but i do i think i think it's really important that we we i think we need some uh, reskilling in this area mm. i think we need to a lot of us do need to just stop and maybe not just skim everything when mm. we're looking at stuff and and that's another thing as well because i, I know there's been a, a especially when it comes to masks wearing and that's very contentious subject um and if you see some of the links about some people have suffered quite badly at the hands of trolls um mm. with, where they've done stuff on that and 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 the vax yeah um, as well you know anything around the vaccine there's been really very polarized opinion can i just say to anybody out there i just think whatever we read and before we write we actually just need to take a minute and we actually yeah. just need to we need to read it again and make sure that we really actually have understood what the person mm. is saying and just think about the effect of what you're going to write before you write it as well. Yeah. I think I think that's that's the crucial element. Mm. And actually, going so tying all of these lovely loose ends together, and going back to what what um, our friend Guy was talking about, I think if we if we think a little bit more in terms of our engagement as well, when we're we're talking to people and responding to things. And just think about, you know, really look into it properly before we make those comments. Mm. That will push the quality up as well. Because I, so I think it's, uh, you know, a little bit more quality in terms of the output, a little bit more quality in terms of how we actually read the information, and then a little bit more quality in terms of how we then respond to the information mm. as well. Even if you don't agree with someone, just put a more balanced view across. Yeah. Or if you've got a very strong view, just don't make it quite so aggressive towards someone. Mm. You know, I think it's 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 fine to have a counter argument to somebody and say, well, absolutely, actually, I hear what you're saying, but my mm. viewpoint is this. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't necessarily have to attack somebody. And I think, it, no. you know, I, I personally, that's what I would like to see more of in terms of social media going forward is just that mm. little bit more balance. I, 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 you know, be, before I start attacking uh, any particular mechanism for delivery as well, I think it's about the quality but also the response and i think if, if we all got that a bit better than that that would be good so what do you think then graham about you know and i know i touched on i got into a specific issue there about the whole supermarket sort of mass of it what, what you know what, what how, where do you stand on the whole thing what's your i mean i, I try to put them around my, my mouth rather yeah. than stand on them i find that that this, <laughs> come that, on uh yeah oh we are better than the school playground yes that is it absolutely 
Yeah. Do you no, wear, so when you go to the local supermarket? Are mm. you wearing one? Uh, currently, yes. Currently, yes. Uh, in fact, because you uh, think it's because because the law says you have to, or because you think it's the right thing to do, or both. Well, it's part, partly because I've had a very bad cough. Yeah. Recently, um, which folks, it's nothing to do with COVID. Okay, no. just before just before you jump on me, uh, there. I have now got antibiotics from the doctors. Thank you. They're, they're very big, very large, and 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 very disgusting. Um, but I just think uh, I, I think me. I, I my view is that I I I just want to think about other people first in that situation. It's yeah. not about me. I probably will feel quite comfortable going around the supermarket without a mask on. Mm. But if other people don't feel comfortable with people there, and I live in a I live in an aging community here yeah. as well, and and I I think that generally there's quite a lot of older people that I see in and around the supermarkets who are actually quite scared mm. of uh, of being there um, because of the virus still, yeah. and 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 it's kind of out of respect for them as much yeah. as anything else that I will wear a mask. Mm. I well, think that's, that's the way people generally, from my perspective, that's the way I would like more people to view it, is to view it that it's not necessarily about you. You're doing something for somebody else, as you say, somebody else who may not feel comfortable or somebody else that actually who'd, who could well be physically impacted more if they were to get COVID than, than yourself. So it's that thinking of others. And yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Really, um, I, I, you know, I also wonder as well for the for the for the people that you know, like the guy at, at Sainsbury's yesterday. You know, if he offers a mask to someone and they say no, what does he do? Does he, you know, how does he react to that? It's you know, you're putting people in 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 positions, aren't you? Really, it's 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 a very diff. It's a whole. The more you peel back the layers of this, it, it's a, it's a huge it's a huge thing, isn't it? Yeah. Now, listen, before we leave to go, mm. go our separate ways this week and, and next week when we return, we promise we will be wearing Christmas jumpers. Um, or T-shirts. Maybe, or T-shirts or anything Christmassy. Great. Okay? There, will be more, there will be more Christmas to, to, the, uh, to the whole proceedings. Now, Graeme, you always ask this at the very end of the show. We're back on Wednesday at 12 next week. Yeah, Wednesday at 12. Uh, but... Just before we came on air today, um, you made me aware of a very, very serious shortcoming in the Cove household, Did which I? is that this oh, year, yes. as an adult, I have not got an advent calendar. Mm. Now, normally, along with the children, I have an advent calendar so that I can at least have that tiny little bit of chocolate every day. But it's not happened. But you say you've got one still. We have, we have, we are four in the family, but we have five. And the reason we have five is my oldest son didn't like the one he was bought. Right. So on, so he, he ate the chocolate and didn't like it. So on the first, I actually went to the round Sainsbury's, I plugged them again. They didn't have any left, but I went to the local pound shop and they did have some. So, so we now have five because he has two, one he doesn't like and one he does. But interestingly, they had loads of the what loads of friends advent calendars left. So if you're struggling, friends. Graham, as in friends. the American sitcom, yeah. there were tons of them. In fact, I might try this weekend. I'll go and see if they've got any left and I'll post you one down if you can't get one. That was uh, all they had. Hmm. Loads does, of friends. Does that actually have like Ross and Rachel and whatever in chocolate inside, do you think? Uh, or? To be fair, in the shop, I didn't start opening the doors, Graham. But I would very much doubt it. I doubt it. I expect it's still like, you know, yeah. Robin's Christmas trees and, and, yeah, and yeah. the like inside. It'd be quite funny though, wouldn't it? Ch yeah. Monica. Mm. Yeah. Chandler. Anyway. You, know, you didn't you didn't like Chandler Bing? I don't know that I want to put Chandler Bing in my mouth. That's 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 the only thing. Um standards should be lower than that. What's the what? Yeah. I hate oh. she says she hates Christmas. Oh, Oh, humbug. Now, here's the thing. What you've done is you've given me a really good idea, though. So what I need to do for next year is I need to tell all of the children when they open their advent calendar on day one that they that they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. 
so <laughs> I've then got to go out and buy other advent calendars for them yeah. all, and I can just eat all of theirs. That is brilliant. Yeah. The challenge is, though, is trying to find them on the first. It's a bit like trying to find a pumpkin on Halloween. They're yeah. usually all gone by there. So you're running. It's a serious game of sort of Russian roulette. You're running there, Graham, because you're gambling on the fact that you're going to find them on the first. No, no. I've already bought them. Ah, OK. Yeah. Secret stash in the boot. Secret stash. In the shed. In my, cu- in my cupboard. Yeah, yeah. Right. In my, my side of the bedroom. That's that's mine. Right. Uh, well, that that would be the ones for the kids. I'll say to the kids, right, mum's bought these, but you don't you don't really want these. Which ones do you really want? And they'll mm. be like, okay, I want that one, that one, and that one. I'll buy them in advance, keep them away, and then on day one, and go, come on, advent calendars. Everyone goes downstairs and they go, oh, I don't like this. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I'll tell you what, love. I'll just nip over the shop and see if I can find some. Back five minutes later, with the bag that's come out yeah they keep it in the car that's the one back five minutes later with the bag out of the car with the the advent calendars have already bought genius jobs are good and q graham eating q graham opening four advent calendars every day yeah you've got it yeah oh love look we've got we've got to eat the rest of them now dear oh dear that's a really great idea um if you haven't been bought an advent calendar this year uh and you're feeling left out that's the way to do it yeah yeah genius did you actually plan that or it that the, the child just actually naturally said no i don't don't like this one yeah, yeah. Ah, without, you without did get, plan it a little bit didn't you? i didn't i didn't buy it to get without getting into the minutiae he likes cadbury's but these are filled ones and he doesn't like the filling so hence why yeah. i'm not having them so he's then got his own. So there's, but the thing is that then there's this floating one round. So I think everyone's trying to get up early to say, can they get their own calendar and the the floater, as it were? But clearly not a floater, no. uh, not a floater in that sense. A, a floating extra advent calendar. Yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. A floating advent calendar. Every every household should have one. Yeah. My 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 um two youngest this year actually have additional advent calendars to the chocolate ones as well. Um, one of them's got um an uh, this seems to be a popular thing this year is book based advent calendars i don't know whether you've seen that so they open it up and every day it's a different book inside oh, okay yeah so it's huge it's like this and every every day he's got a different mr man book ah oh, um, nice yeah it's really good and every I like the, leg, day... I like the lego one's a good one isn't it with a little lego character in every day yeah yeah um, I do know that, I mean, you can get some really expensive advent calendars. I'd love anyone, if they're watching this throughout the day, to tell me of the most expensive advent calendar they've ever been called. I mean, I did look at some. You can get, like, um, hand creams, a, a different hand cream every day. Okay. Why would you would need 25 hand creams, I really do not know. But, I mean, you know, there you go, 60, 60 quid later. You know. I'm thinking, Graham, there could be a poll in this around advent calendars. Yeah, what's the most ex- well, yeah. We just need a post on what's the most expensive yeah. advent calendar and what were the prizes inside. Yeah. Imagine it. Um, the prize today is a Cartier watch. <laughs> you know, I bet I bet somewhere in the world there's have you ever watched that program where people make things for the the really rich? Yes. Yeah. And and it's like all bespoke stuff. I'm I'm sure there's a company that do advent Bes- calendars. Bespoke really advent rich. calendars. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like maybe they could send us one, Graham, as a yeah, sample. That, well, could... Yeah, just to well, check happy. it out. Yeah, no problem. Just happy to, to road test it, it. Yeah. Bit of gold, bit of platinum, mm. you know, the odd Rolex in there. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like crackers, right? You spend ages trying to find a cracker that's got anything decent in it. You know, and 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 when you look at a luxury cracker, you know, you sometimes pick up those boxes for, and it says oh, luxury crackers and they're like, rather than a couple of quid for a box of crackers, they're 10 quid for a box of crackers. Yeah. And you still look at the gifts and you go, well, actually, they're not much cop, are no. they? Right? I mean, to me, a luxury cracker would be Rolex. Yeah. Now that. Or vinyl for you, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd have to be and, a, 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 different, a, different vine, a different vinyl album every day. Yeah, can you imagine that? That would be just that. That would that would be an awesome 
that was well i've just noticed awesome. graham it's the euro millions rollover tonight 110 million I'll, I'll go on air and say if i scoop that money tonight next year you're getting a bespoke advent calendar with vinyl in every door i mean it's not going to happen no because but i bought my ticket did. but i'm prepared to nail my colors to the mast and say if i come in tonight on that 110 million you're going vinyl bespoke advent calendar for 2022 that would just be amazing just think how big it would be though yeah it'd just be <laughs> it'd take up a wall <laughs> <laughs> oh um, what's that you've had delivered well it's from Stephen. last year we yeah. did this wow ergonomics and he said yeah anyway well good luck with that, because I'm 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 looking forward to it. Next job thanks after this is to go. And, next job's to go and get my ticket. Yeah, you got to go and get your ticket, folks. Thanks for joining us again for another Wow Ergonomics. I'm going to put the uh, link to this show back on LinkedIn so everybody yeah. can watch it if they didn't manage to watch it the first time. Thanks to uh, LinkedIn for for not talking to Streamyard this morning. Don't know why they didn't want to talk, but there we go. Um, hopefully, we'll be back live on LinkedIn next week. Um, a growing number of people watching this on Twitter. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, don't forget, folks, we have got coming up as well on the 10th of December. Next the, Friday? Uh, yeah, the next. Next Friday. Get together, network event thing. Lots of people already registered, but please don't forget to do that. I'll put the link for that again in the comments for this show, um, along with a whole load of workplace assessors. So if you are looking to get yourself sorted out at home, get yourself an assessment, please do sort that out would be most uh, happy to hear that you've got yourself sorted out um, and uh, and look out for Colette's reviews over the next week as well. Bye for now, everybody. See you Wednesday.